Today's topic is cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is a term used to describe a set of neurological conditions that affect movement. It is the most common form of childhood disability. Causes. Muscle control takes place in a part of the brain called the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the upper part of the brain. Damage to the cerebrum before, during, or within five years of birth can cause cerebral palsy. The cerebrum is also responsible for memory, ability to learn, and communication skills. This is why some people with cerebral palsy have problems with communication and learning. Cerebrum damage can sometimes affect vision and hearing. Factors that may lead to cerebral palsy. Mutations in genes that lead to abnormal brain development. Maternal infections that affect the developing fetus. Fetal stroke. A disruption of blood supply to the developing brain. Infant infections that cause inflammation in and around the brain. Traumatic head injury to an infant from a motor vehicle accident or fall. Lack of oxygen to the brain. Asphyxia related to difficult labor or delivery. Bacterial infection of the mother fetus or baby that directly or indirectly attacks the infant's central nervous system. Symptoms. Signs and symptoms can vary greatly. Movement and coordination problems associated with cerebral palsy may include variations in muscle tone, such as being either too stiff or too floppy, stiff muscles and exaggerated reflexes, splasticity, Stiff muscles with normal reflexes, rigidity. Lack of muscle coordination, ataxia. Tremors or involuntary movements. Slow writhing movements. Athetosis. Delays in reaching motor skill milestones, such as pushing up on arms, sitting up alone, or crawling. Favoring one side of the body, such as reaching with only one hand or dragging a leg while crawling. Difficulty walking, such as walking on toes, a crouched gait, a scissors-like gait with knees crossing, a wide gait, or an asymmetrical gait. Excessive drooling or problems with swallowing, difficulty with sucking or eating, delays in speech development or difficulty speaking, difficulty with precise motions, such as picking up a crayon or scissors, or a spoon, seizures. Brain abnormalities associated with cerebral palsy also contribute to other neurological problems. People with cerebral palsy may also have difficulty with vision and hearing, intellectual disabilities, seizures, abnormal touch or pain perceptions, oral diseases, mental health, psychiatric conditions, urinary incontinence. Diagnosis. If your family doctor or pediatrician suspects your child has cerebral palsy, he or she will evaluate your child's signs and symptoms. Your doctor will also order a series of tests to make a diagnosis and rule out other possible causes. Brain scans. Brain imaging technologies can reveal areas of damage or abnormal development in the brain. These tests may include the following. Magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. An MRI uses radio waves and a magnetic field to produce detailed 3D or cross-sectional images of your child's brain. An MRI can often identify any lesions or abnormalities in your child's brain. Cranial ultrasound. This can be performed during infancy. A cranial ultrasound uses high-frequency sound waves to obtain images of the brain. Electroencephalopogram EEG. If your child has had seizures, your doctor may order an electroencephalopogram EEG, to determine if he or she has epilepsy, which often occurs in people with cerebral palsy. The EEG records the electrical activity of your child's brain. If he or she has epilepsy, it's common for there to be changes in normal brain wave patterns. Laboratory tests. Laboratory tests may also screen for genetic or metabolic problems. Additional tests. If your child is diagnosed with cerebral palsy, you'll likely be referred to specialists for assessments of other conditions often associated with the disorder. These tests may identify vision impairment, hearing impairment, speech delays or impairments, intellectual disabilities, other developmental delays, movement disorders, 
Medications. Medications that can lessen the tightness of muscles may be used to improve functional abilities, treat pain, and manage complications related to spasticity or other cerebral palsy symptoms. Isolated spasticity. When spasticity is isolated to one muscle group, your doctor may recommend onobotulinum toxin A, Botox injections directly into the muscle, nerve, or both. Your child will need injections about every three months. Generalized spasticity. If the whole body is infected, oral muscle relaxants may relax stiff, contracted muscles. These drugs include diazepam, Valium, Dantrolene, Dantrium, and Baclofen, Gablofen. Therapies. A variety of non-drug therapies can help a person with cerebral palsy enhance functional abilities. Physical therapy. Muscle training and exercise may help your child's strength, flexibility, balance, motor development, and mobility. You'll also learn how to safely care for your child's everyday needs at home, such as bathing and feeding your child. Occupational therapy. Using alternative strategies and adaptive equipment, occupational therapists work to promote your child's independent participation in daily activities and routines in the home, the school, and the community. Speech and language therapy. Speech language pathologists can help improve your child's ability to speak clearly or to communicate using sign language. Recreational therapy. Some children may benefit from recreational therapies such as therapeutic horseback riding. This type of therapy can help improve your child's motor skills, speech, and emotional well-being. Surgical or other procedures. Surgery may be needed to lessen muscle tightness or correct bone abnormalities caused by spasticity. These treatments include orthopedic surgery. Children with severe contractures or deformities may need surgery on bones or joints to place their arms, hips, or legs in their correct positions. Thank you for watching the video. Please do not forget to like and share the video and hit the subscribe button to always stay on top of our new videos.